In a world filled with distractions, manipulations and countless external pressures, it's easy to lose sight of what truly matters, living a virtuous, self-sufficient life. Stoicism, a timeless philosophy rooted in the teachings of thinkers like Epictetus, Seneca and Marcus Aurelius, provides us with the tools to cultivate inner strength and reject harmful external influences. One of the key lessons Stoicism teaches is to guard your mind and heart against things that may seem harmless on the surface, but are actually detrimental to your character and peace of mind. This guide explores 10 things that you should never accept from strangers and how the practice of Stoicism can help you navigate these situations. We'll examine the type of people who offer these things, why they are harmful, and how Stoic principles can be applied to avoid falling into these traps. Now, if you are new here, please like the video and subscribe. Statistics show that only 15% of my audience is subscribed to the channel, so if this content has helped you in any way, I ask you to subscribe and hit the notification bell. 1. Compliments, the trap of external validation. Compliments may seem innocent, but accepting them, especially from strangers, can lead to a dependency on external validation. Stoicism teaches us to be self-reliant and to base our self-worth on our internal virtues, not on the fleeting opinions of others. When we allow compliments to influence our mood or self-perception, we begin to rely on praise from others rather than on the steady foundation of our own actions and moral integrity. Compliments from strangers are particularly dangerous because they are often shallow and lack an understanding of who we truly are. A stranger's compliment is not based on a deep knowledge of your character or values. Rather, it is based on a fleeting impression which may not reflect reality. Accepting such compliments can distort your self-perception, leading you to prioritize how you are seen by others rather than how you see yourself. Furthermore, Stoicism emphasizes the importance of equanimity, remaining steady in both praise and criticism. When we accept compliments, we become susceptible to being swayed by external feedback, which can lead to emotional highs and lows based on factors outside of our control. The person offering compliments may not always have pure intentions. They could be seeking to manipulate your perception of yourself, boosting your ego in order to later gain something from you, whether it's approval, favor, or even control over your decisions. Compliments are often a tool used to curry favor or create a sense of obligation, especially when they come from people who do not have a genuine relationship with you. In some cases, individuals who lavish compliments may be trying to ingratiate themselves with you for personal gain. They may want to make you feel good about yourself so that you will be more likely to return the favor, either through actions or by offering them the same validation they gave you. This creates a dynamic where your self-worth becomes entangled with the opinions and desires of others making it difficult to maintain your independence and sense of self. Compliments inflate the ego and create an unhealthy attachment to external praise. When your sense of self is based on what others think, it becomes fragile. You start chasing approval rather than focusing on what truly matters, living in accordance with your principles. Compliments can make you dependent on the validation of others which can lead to insecurity when that validation is not forthcoming. The Stoics believed that we should not rely on external sources for our happiness or self-worth. Instead, we should focus on cultivating inner virtues, such as wisdom, courage, justice and temperance. When we allow compliments to dictate our sense of self, we lose sight of these virtues and become more concerned with appearances than with substance. This leads to a superficial existence where our actions are motivated by the desire for praise rather than the pursuit of virtue. Moreover, compliments can lead to arrogance and pride, both of which are seen as vices in Stoicism. 
When we believe the flattering words of strangers, we may begin to overestimate our abilities or virtues, which can lead to poor decision-making and a lack of self-awareness. This inflated sense of self can distance us from the path of self-improvement as we become complacent and satisfied with the approval of others rather than striving to live a life of integrity and virtue. Marcus Aurelius reminds us, it never ceases to amaze me. We all love ourselves more than other people, but care more about their opinion than our own. When offered a compliment, practice indifference and focus on whether your actions are virtuous. True confidence comes from living in harmony with your values, not from the approval of strangers. To integrate this stoic principle into your daily life, start by examining how compliments affect your mood and self-perception. The next time someone offers you praise, take a moment to reflect on whether the compliment aligns with your values and actions. Ask yourself if the praise is rooted in a genuine understanding of who you are, or if it is simply based on a superficial impression. If the latter is true, remind yourself that your worth is not determined by the opinions of others, but by your adherence to virtue. Additionally, practice equanimity in both praise and criticism. When you receive a compliment, remind yourself that it is just as fleeting and external as criticism. Both are opinions that are outside of your control and neither should dictate your sense of self-worth. Instead, focus on living according to your principles and let go of the need for external validation. 2. Sympathy. The illusion of support. Sympathy from strangers may seem comforting in times of distress, but Stoicism teaches that we must be emotionally self-sufficient. Relying on the sympathy of others can reinforce feelings of victimhood and helplessness. While it may feel good to receive sympathy, especially when we are going through difficult times, Stoicism encourages us to find strength within ourselves rather than seeking emotional validation from others. When we accept sympathy, we are essentially allowing others to validate our suffering. This can create a dynamic where we begin to rely on external support to feel better about our circumstances rather than developing the inner resilience necessary to overcome challenges on our own. Sympathy can also lead to a sense of entitlement, where we expect others to acknowledge and validate our hardships, which can hinder our ability to move forward and grow from adversity. Stoicism emphasizes the importance of personal responsibility and self-mastery. By accepting sympathy, we may be avoiding the hard work of confronting our emotions and taking control of our reactions to difficult situations. Sympathy while well-meaning, can often encourage passivity and complacency, as it allows us to dwell on our misfortunes rather than actively working to overcome them. The person offering sympathy might be well-meaning, but often it comes from a place of condescension or pity. By offering you their sympathy, they may be positioning themselves as superior or more fortunate, which undermines your sense of strength and resilience. Sympathy is often a way for people to distance themselves from your suffering as it allows them to feel good about themselves for offering emotional support without actually engaging in meaningful help or solutions. In some cases, individuals who offer sympathy may do so out of a desire to feel morally superior. By expressing sympathy for your situation, they can position themselves as more fortunate or more emotionally stable which reinforces their own sense of self-worth at your expense. This dynamic can be harmful as it places you in a position of weakness and dependency while elevating the person offering sympathy. Additionally, sympathy can sometimes be a form of emotional manipulation. People may offer sympathy in order to gain your trust or make you feel indebted to them. Once you have accepted their sympathy, they may expect you to return the favor in the future, creating a sense of obligation and dependence. Sympathy can trap you in a cycle of self-pity. When you accept it, 
you start to view yourself as someone in need of rescuing rather than someone capable of overcoming challenges on your own. This weakens your emotional resilience and prevents personal growth. By relying on the sympathy of others, you may begin to see yourself as a victim of circumstance rather than as an agent of change in your own life. Stoicism teaches that we should embrace adversity as an opportunity for growth. Marcus Aurelius wrote, The impediment to action advances action. What stands in the way becomes the way. This means that challenges and obstacles are not merely things to be endured or overcome, but are essential to our personal development. When we accept sympathy, we may be avoiding the hard work of confronting our difficulties head-on and finding ways to grow from them. Moreover, accepting sympathy can create a sense of entitlement where we expect others to validate our suffering and offer emotional support. This entitlement can prevent us from developing the inner strength and resilience necessary to navigate life's challenges on our own. Instead of seeking sympathy from others, we should focus on cultivating emotional independence and self-mastery. Instead of seeking or accepting sympathy, practice amor fati, the love of fate. As Epictetus said, it's not what happens to you, but how you react to it that matters. Focus on how you can grow from adversity and let go of the need for others' emotional validation. To integrate this principle into your life, start by reframing how you perceive difficult situations. Instead of viewing challenges as things to be pitied, see them as opportunities for growth and self-improvement. When you face adversity, ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? And how can I use this challenge to strengthen my character? By focusing on the lessons and growth that come from hardship, you can cultivate a sense of empowerment and resilience rather than relying on the sympathy of others. Additionally, practice gratitude for adversity. The Stoics believed that challenges are an essential part of life and that they provide us with the opportunity to demonstrate our virtues. When you encounter a difficult situation, take a moment to express gratitude for the opportunity to grow and improve. This mindset shift will help you develop emotional independence and resilience, allowing you to navigate life's challenges with grace and strength. Three Gifts – The Hidden Costs of Material Offerings while gifts can seem generous, accepting them from strangers can create a sense of obligation. Stoicism teaches that true happiness is found in inner virtue, not in material possessions. Gifts often come with strings attached, leading to entanglements that can cloud your judgment. Material gifts, especially those from strangers, can easily become distractions from your pursuit of a virtuous and contented life. The Stoics believed that material wealth and possessions are external and should not dictate your happiness or sense of self-worth. When you accept a gift, you may inadvertently place value on something external, which can lead to attachment and dependency. Moreover, gifts often come with unspoken expectations. When you accept a gift, you may feel obligated to return the favor, either through material means or by offering something in return, such as time, attention, or loyalty. This creates a dynamic where your actions are influenced by external factors, rather than being motivated by your internal principles and values. The person offering the gift might be trying to win your favor, manipulate you, or make you feel indebted to them. Gifts from strangers, especially unsolicited ones, are rarely given without some expectation in return. The giver may be seeking to exert influence over you, expecting future loyalty or reciprocal favors, even if they don't express this outright. They might be trying to gain an advantage in your relationship, making you feel obligated to them. In some cases, gift givers may seek validation or acknowledgement of their own generosity. By giving you something, they expect praise, admiration, or gratitude in return. 
This type of giving often comes with strings attached, whether you realize it at first or not. Such transactions can lead to a sense of indebtedness where you feel that you owe the giver something beyond the actual value of the gift. Gifts can foster greed, dependency, and a focus on external wealth. According to Stoicism, these are distractions from the pursuit of virtue and wisdom. When you accept gifts, you risk becoming attached to material things and losing sight of what truly matters, your integrity and self-sufficiency. By placing value on external possessions, you shift your focus away from the internal virtues that should guide your life. Moreover, gifts often come with unspoken obligations, which can cloud your judgment and force you into situations where you feel compelled to act against your values. This creates a dynamic of dependency and external influence which undermines the Stoic ideal of self-reliance and autonomy. When you allow material possessions to dictate your actions, you become less focused on cultivating inner strength and more concerned with external appearances. Seneca reminds us, it is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more that is poor. When someone offers you a gift, reflect on whether it aligns with your values. If accepting it would lead to obligation or distraction from your principles, politely decline. Remember that true wealth lies in virtue, not in material possessions. To practice this stoic principle, regularly assess your relationship with material wealth and possessions. Are you placing too much value on external items, or are you focused on cultivating inner peace and virtue? When offered a gift, Ask yourself if accepting it will enhance or detract from your pursuit of a virtuous life. If it leads to entanglements or dependencies, it's better to decline. Additionally, practice gratitude for the things you already have. Stoicism teaches us to appreciate what is within our control and to find contentment in simplicity. By cultivating a mindset of gratitude for the essentials, you can avoid the trap of materialism and focus on living according to your values. 2. 4. Unsolicited advice. The interference of external judgments. Stoicism emphasizes the importance of living according to your own reason and virtue. Unsolicited advice from strangers is often based on their personal biases and assumptions, not on a true understanding of your situation or character. While advice can sometimes be helpful, when it comes from someone who doesn't fully understand your context, it can lead to confusion and misdirection. Accepting unsolicited advice can undermine your confidence in your own judgment. It shifts your focus away from what you know to be true and right and instead places importance on someone else's perspective, someone who may not have your best interests in mind. This goes against the stoic practice of trusting your internal wisdom and living according to your own principles. Those who offer unsolicited advice often believe they know better than you. This behavior can be a subtle assertion of dominance as they seek to impose their worldview on you without considering your perspective or values. People who give unsolicited advice may be projecting their own insecurities, trying to feel superior by helping others. Sometimes, individuals who give advice without being asked are more interested in hearing themselves talk than in genuinely helping. They may view their own opinions as inherently more valuable or correct, and by offering advice, they reinforce their sense of self-importance. This dynamic can be harmful as it shifts the focus from your own growth and decision-making to their desire to assert control or superiority. Unsolicited advice can lead to confusion and doubt. Instead of trusting your own judgment and moral compass, you begin to question your decisions based on someone else's opinion. This weakens your autonomy and erodes your inner peace. Accepting advice without reflection can pull you away from your own path and make you more reliant on external input. Furthermore, unsolicited advice often reflects the values and priorities of the giver, not your own. 
By accepting and acting on this advice, you risk living a life that aligns with someone else's values rather than your own. This creates internal conflict and detracts from your ability to live authentically and in accordance with your principles. When offered advice, reflect on whether the person truly understands your situation. As Epictetus advises, make the best use of what is in your power and take the rest as it happens. Trust your reason and focus on living in accordance with your principles rather than the opinions of strangers. To implement this in your daily life, practice discernment when it comes to advice, especially from strangers. Before accepting or acting on someone's guidance, take the time to reflect on whether their advice aligns with your values and understanding of the situation. Ask yourself whether the person offering advice has the knowledge, experience or context to provide valuable insight. Additionally, cultivate the ability to politely decline unsolicited advice. You can listen with respect, but ultimately, you are responsible for making decisions based on your own reasoning and virtue. By maintaining control over your actions and choices, you reinforce the stoic principle of self-reliance and inner wisdom. Now, ta. 5. Flattery. The poison of inflated ego. Flattery, like compliments, feeds the ego. Stoicism teaches that pride and arrogance are dangerous vices that distract us from the pursuit of virtue. Flattery is a subtle form of manipulation that can lead to self-deception. When you allow yourself to be swayed by flattery, you begin to base your self-worth on how others perceive you, rather than on your own actions and character. Flattery is particularly dangerous because it often masks itself as genuine praise. It can make you feel good about yourself in the moment, but over time, it distorts your sense of self and creates a dependency on external validation. When your ego is inflated by flattery, you may become less focused on self-improvement and more concerned with maintaining the admiration of others. People who flatter often do so to gain something in return. They may seek to manipulate you into favoring them, either for personal gain or to sway your judgment. Flatterers are often motivated by selfish desires and their praise is rarely sincere. Instead, they are using flattery as a tool to influence your emotions and actions. Flattery is frequently used as a tactic by individuals who want to curry favor or build alliances. By making you feel good about yourself, they hope to create a sense of obligation, making you more likely to support their interests or desires. In this way, flattery becomes a form of manipulation as the flatterer seeks to control your perception of yourself and your decisions. Flattery blinds you to your weaknesses. Instead of seeking self-improvement and growth, you begin to believe that you are already perfect, which halts any progress in your personal development. Flattery encourages complacency and false confidence, leading you away from the stoic path of continuous self-reflection and improvement. When you accept flattery, you are more likely to ignore your faults and failings, which are essential to address if you want to grow as a person. Flattery feeds into the human desire for recognition and praise, but this desire is contrary to the stoic ideal of focusing on inner virtue rather than external validation. Over time, flattery can distort your self-perception and make it difficult to maintain humility and self-awareness. As Marcus Aurelius said, receive without pride, let go without attachment. When faced with flattery, remind yourself that true worth is not based on how others perceive you, but on how you live your life. Stay grounded in humility and focus on your continuous growth. To integrate this practice into your daily life, be mindful of how flattery affects your emotions and self-perception. When someone flatters you, Take a moment to reflect on whether their praise is based on genuine understanding or whether it is a form of manipulation. Ask yourself whether the flattery aligns with your values and actions or whether it is simply an attempt to influence you. Additionally, 
practice humility by regularly engaging in self-reflection. Stoicism encourages us to acknowledge our weaknesses and work to improve them. By focusing on continuous self-improvement and virtue, you can avoid the trap of becoming complacent or arrogant in response to flattery. Cultivate a mindset that values progress over praise and remain focused on your internal development rather than external recognition. You have now reached the halfway mark of the video. I congratulate you for trying to become a better version of yourself and I also humbly ask you to leave a comment as it helps my channel immensely. If you do not know what to comment, just write, I am stoic, so I know you reached this far. And don't forget to subscribe for more content like this. Also, I've linked some books on stoicism that helped me become the man I am today and will also help you achieve a stoic mindset. 6. Criticism. The Burden of Criticism. Not all criticism is helpful. Stoicism teaches us to be discerning about whose feedback we accept. Criticism from strangers is often uninformed or malicious, and accepting it can undermine your confidence and clarity. While constructive criticism can be valuable, unsolicited criticism from strangers is often based on incomplete information or personal biases. Accepting criticism without reflection can lead to self-doubt and confusion. When you allow the opinions of others to dictate your sense of self-worth, you become vulnerable to the whims of external judgments. This undermines the stoic ideal of self-reliance and inner peace, as your happiness and confidence become dependent on the approval or disapproval of others. Critics often project their own insecurities or frustrations onto others. When a stranger offers unsolicited criticism, they may be attempting to bring you down to elevate themselves. This type of criticism is rarely offered in good faith, and it often reflects the critic's own struggles rather than a genuine desire to help you improve. In some cases, individuals who offer criticism may do so out of jealousy or a desire to assert dominance. By pointing out your perceived flaws, they attempt to position themselves as superior or more knowledgeable. This type of criticism is not intended to help you grow, but to diminish your confidence and self-esteem. Accepting criticism without reflection can lead to unnecessary self-doubt and distraction. Stoicism emphasizes focusing on what you can control, your thoughts, actions and reactions, not the opinions of others. When you allow external criticism to influence your self-perception, you are giving away your power to individuals who may not have your best interests at heart. Moreover, unsolicited criticism often reflects the values and priorities of the critic, not your own. By accepting this criticism, you risk living a life that is shaped by the judgments of others rather than by your own principles and understanding. This can lead to internal conflict and dissatisfaction as you become more concerned with pleasing others than with living authentically. Epictetus reminds us, if someone speaks badly of you, do not defend yourself against the accusations, but reply, you obviously don't know me, or you would have mentioned other faults of mine. Learn to separate constructive feedback from malicious criticism and focus on improving yourself based on your values, not external judgments. To practice this principle, develop the habit of reflecting on criticism before accepting it. When someone criticizes you, ask yourself whether their feedback is based on a genuine understanding of your actions and values, or whether it reflects their own biases and insecurities. If the criticism is valid, use it as an opportunity for growth. If it is not, let it go and remain focused on living according to your principles. Additionally, cultivate emotional resilience by practicing indifference to external opinions. Stoicism teaches us that we cannot control what others think or say about us, but we can control how we respond. By maintaining equanimity in the face of criticism, 
You can preserve your inner peace and confidence, regardless of what others may think. Certainly. Here's the continuation of the detailed guide for the last four topics. These sections will build on the same level of depth and stoic philosophy as the earlier sections, allowing the guide to flow seamlessly toward the conclusion. 7. Fear. The infectious nature of external anxiety. Fear is one of the most powerful emotions that can manipulate our behavior and decisions. According to Stoicism, fear is a product of our judgments about external events, not the events themselves. Accepting fear from strangers, or anyone for that matter, can cloud your reasoning, weaken your resolve, and lead you to act in ways that go against your values. Stoicism teaches that fear is often irrational, a byproduct of misunderstanding or overestimating the importance of things beyond our control. When you accept fear from strangers, whether it's their own fear projected onto you or an attempt to instill fear in you, it disrupts your mental clarity. You become susceptible to emotional reactions rather than rational responses, which are essential to living in accordance with stoic principles. Fear prevents you from living in the present moment and dealing with reality as it is. Stoics emphasize the importance of focusing on what you can control, your thoughts, actions and attitudes. When you allow fear, especially external fear, to dictate your actions, you lose your power over your mind and become a slave to external circumstances. People who spread fear are often driven by their own anxieties and insecurities. They may be trying to justify their own decisions or seek validation for their fears by imposing them on others. Such individuals might have a pessimistic outlook on life or feel the need to control others through fear. Sometimes people spread fear deliberately to manipulate others. They may want to create a sense of urgency or crisis to control how you behave or make decisions. In many cases, these individuals use fear as a tool to manipulate you into doing something that benefits them, even if it is at your expense. Fear, in this way, can become a method of coercion and control. Fear paralyzes your ability to think clearly and act with courage. It prevents you from making rational decisions and may cause you to act impulsively. Stoicism encourages you to face challenges with composure and reason rather than fear and panic. When you accept fear from strangers, you hand over control of your emotions and responses, making you more vulnerable to manipulation and anxiety. Additionally, fear often leads to avoidance behavior. When you allow fear to influence your actions, you may avoid situations, people, or opportunities that are essential for your growth. By succumbing to fear, you limit your ability to face adversity and develop resilience, key components of Stoic wisdom. Marcus Aurelius said, you have power over your mind, not outside events. Realize this, and you will find strength when someone tries to instill fear in you, pause and reflect on whether the fear is rational. Is it based on facts and reality, or is it an emotional reaction to something beyond your control? By maintaining clarity of thought and rejecting external fear, you can make decisions based on reason rather than panic. To practice this stoic principle, whenever fear arises, either from within or from an external source, ask yourself, is this fear justified or is this within my control? If the fear is irrational or based on something you cannot control, let it go. Embrace the idea that you can face any situation with calm and reason, as the Stoics advised. Focus on what is within your power, your reactions and your choices, and let external fears dissipate. Cultivating courage in the face of fear is a key aspect of Stoicism. Instead of avoiding what makes you fearful, confront it head-on with rationality and calmness. By practicing courage in your daily life, 
you develop the mental resilience to face adversity without being overwhelmed by fear. 8. Gossip – The Destructive Power of Idle Talk Gossip is one of the most destructive forms of communication. It feeds on negativity, idle speculation, and the judgments of others. According to Stoic principles, gossip is a waste of time and energy, as it distracts you from focusing on your own personal growth and living a virtuous life. Engaging in gossip draws you into conversations that do not align with the Stoic ideal of focusing on what is within your control. Gossip typically centers around matters that are external and irrelevant to your pursuit of virtue. Stoicism teaches us that we should focus on self-improvement and the cultivation of inner wisdom. When we engage in gossip, we are not only indulging in trivialities, but also reinforcing negative traits such as judgment, envy, and resentment. By accepting gossip from strangers, you also open yourself up to unnecessary drama and conflict. Gossip can breed misunderstandings, resentment, and mistrust among people, creating unnecessary tensions in your life. Engaging in gossip can pull you away from the inner peace and focus that Stoicism emphasizes. The person who shares gossip is typically driven by their own insecurities, envy, or a need for attention. Gossipers often seek to elevate themselves by tearing others down or by positioning themselves as insiders with privileged information. They thrive on creating drama and division, using gossip as a way to feel important or gain influence over others. In some cases, gossipers may be unaware of the harm they are causing. They might engage in gossip as a form of social bonding or entertainment without considering the consequences of their words. However, whether malicious or careless, the act of gossiping reflects a lack of self-discipline and wisdom. Gossip creates division, mistrust, and negative energy. It shifts your focus away from your own self-improvement and personal development. Engaging in gossip also encourages you to judge others based on incomplete or inaccurate information, which is contrary to the Stoic ideal of focusing on your own actions and thoughts. Gossip often leads to unnecessary conflict, drama, and misunderstandings. By participating in gossip, you become entangled in the opinions and judgments of others, which can pull you away from your own path of virtue. Gossip also fosters a sense of superiority over others, which is a form of arrogance, a vice that Stoicism warns against. When someone tries to involve you in gossip, practice indifference. Seneca said, associate with people who are likely to improve you. If a conversation doesn't contribute to your personal growth or reflect your values, remove yourself from it. Focus on conversations that encourage learning, self-reflection and virtue. To apply this stoic teaching in your life, pay attention to the types of conversations you engage in. When you notice gossip, either initiated by others or yourself, pause and ask, is this helping me grow as a person? If the answer is no, redirect the conversation or politely excuse yourself. By practicing mindfulness in your communication, you can avoid being drawn into gossip and instead focus on meaningful dialogue. Additionally, cultivate relationships with people who inspire you to be better rather than those who encourage gossip or negativity. Surround yourself with individuals who value virtue, wisdom, and personal growth, as this will help you stay focused on your stoic principles and avoid distractions like gossip. Dum, dumped, nine. Pity, the trap of pity. Pity, much like sympathy, can trap you in a cycle of victimhood. Accepting pity from strangers encourages you to see yourself as helpless or in need of rescuing, which goes against the Stoic principle of self-reliance. Stoicism teaches that we should face challenges with courage and resilience, not with an expectation of pity or external validation. When you accept pity, you allow others to define your experiences and suffering. 
you give them the power to judge your circumstances and place you in a position of weakness. Pity fosters dependence on the validation and approval of others, weakening your inner strength and ability to overcome adversity on your own. Stoicism encourages us to embrace adversity as an opportunity for growth. Instead of seeking or accepting pity, we should focus on how we can use difficult experiences to cultivate inner resilience and wisdom. By rejecting pity, you maintain control over your narrative and avoid falling into a passive or victimized mindset. The person who offers pity often sees themselves as superior or more fortunate than you. Pity is a form of condescension where the giver assumes that they are in a better position to judge your suffering or that they have more strength or resources to offer. While they may believe they are being compassionate, pity often reinforces a power dynamic where you are placed in a position of weakness. In some cases, individuals offer pity to elevate their own sense of moral superiority. By expressing pity for your situation, they can feel good about themselves for being compassionate or caring while simultaneously distancing themselves from your struggles. Pity keeps you trapped in a victim mentality, preventing you from embracing stoic resilience. When you accept pity, you reinforce the idea that you are powerless in your situation and in need of external validation or help. This undermines your ability to take control of your life and rise above adversity. Pity also encourages emotional dependence. When you rely on others to validate your suffering, you become more focused on how others perceive your hardships than on how you can overcome them. This external focus detracts from the stoic practice of self-mastery and internal strength. Instead of accepting pity, embrace the stoic concept of amor fati, the love of fate. As Marcus Aurelius said, a man's worth is no greater than the worth of his ambitions. Focus on how you can grow from adversity rather than seeking pity from others. Use challenges as opportunities to demonstrate your strength and resilience. To integrate this principle into your daily life, practice reframing your perspective on challenges. Instead of viewing difficult situations as sources of suffering, see them as opportunities for growth. When others offer pity, politely decline and remind yourself that you have the inner strength to overcome adversity without external validation. Additionally, practice gratitude for adversity. Stoicism teaches that challenges are essential for personal growth and that we should embrace them with courage and resilience. By cultivating a mindset of gratitude for life's difficulties, you can avoid the trap of victimhood and develop greater emotional independence. Matter. 10. Envy. The destructive comparison of success. Envy is a destructive emotion that undermines your contentment and self-worth. Accepting envy, whether from others or within yourself, draws you into a mindset of comparison and competition. Stoicism teaches that true happiness comes from within, not from comparing yourself to others or seeking external success. Envy distracts you from focusing on your own path and virtues, when you compare yourself to others, you shift your attention away from what truly matters, your own growth, actions and principles. Instead, you become preoccupied with how you measure up to others, which can lead to dissatisfaction, resentment and a constant sense of inadequacy. Furthermore, envy encourages you to place value on external achievements, such as wealth, status or recognition. These are things that are beyond your control and do not contribute to your inner happiness. Stoicism teaches that we should focus on what is within our control, our thoughts, actions and virtues, and let go of external comparisons. People who express envy are often dissatisfied with their own lives. They project their insecurities onto others by either envying your success or encouraging you to envy someone else. In doing so, they shift the focus away from their own shortcomings and create a dynamic of competition rather than mutual support. 
In some cases, individuals who encourage envy may be trying to manipulate you into pursuing external goals that benefit them. By fostering envy, they can influence your decisions and actions, steering you toward goals that align with their interests rather than your own values. Envy fosters bitterness and dissatisfaction, both of which prevent you from finding contentment in your own life. Stoicism teaches that true happiness comes from inner peace and living in accordance with virtue, not from external success or recognition. When you allow envy to influence your thoughts or actions, you lose sight of your own values and goals. Envy also erodes your sense of self-worth. When you compare yourself to others, you reinforce the idea that your value is determined by external factors such as wealth, status or appearance. This is contrary to the Stoic belief that self-worth is rooted in your character and actions, not in how you measure up to others. When confronted with envy, either from yourself or others, focus on gratitude for what you have. As Seneca said, it is not the man who has too little, but the man who craves more, that is poor. Cultivate contentment with your own life and journey and let go of comparisons to others. To practice this principle, regularly remind yourself of the Stoic teaching that external achievements are not the source of true happiness. When you notice feelings of envy arising, pause and reflect on what you truly value. Ask yourself whether the object of your envy aligns with your principles or if it is simply a distraction from your own growth. Additionally, practice gratitude for your own journey. Stoicism teaches that each person's path is unique and that we should focus on our own progress rather than comparing ourselves to others. By cultivating a sense of gratitude for your own life and experiences, you can overcome envy and find greater contentment in your own achievements and growth. In a world filled with distractions, temptations and external pressures, it's crucial to guard your inner world. The Stoics believed that true peace and happiness come from living in accordance with virtue and focusing on what we can control. By rejecting harmful external influences, whether they come in the form of gifts, flattery, gossip or fear, you can cultivate unshakable self-esteem, emotional resilience and inner peace. Stoicism is not about cutting yourself off from the world, but about living deliberately and mindfully. By integrating Stoic teachings into your daily life, you can maintain clarity and control over your thoughts, actions and emotions, regardless of what others offer or impose upon you. Remember, as Marcus Aurelius said, the happiness of your life depends upon the quality of your thoughts. Guard your mind against harmful external influences and live a life of inner peace, wisdom and strength. Now, if any part of this message has been helpful to you, leave us your like and comment, helping the algorithm recommend it to someone who needs it at this time. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss new videos. And if you look through the videos we've already uploaded, you're sure to find something to take with you. Have a good day.